Well, hey there, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Rate the Record podcast, episode 24. We are chug-a-lugging along with this thing now, 24 episodes. It feels weird to say that. I, I didn't, it hasn't really hit me in the past that we're above 20 now. It, it doesn't, hasn't hit me that we're past two. Fair enough. Yeah, I mean, like, we've been doing this long enough, but at the same time, it doesn't feel very long. But anyways, the people who just can't get time right are Chris and... Savannah. That's right, your host for the day on this podcast, as per usual. So thank you very much for joining us on this podcast today. Glad to see you. Make sure you hit the like, subscribe, comment, follow, rate, share, all these great things, because we are trying to build a musical community, and we want you to be a part of it, discussing music, listening to it, having fun, all of that. Meet friends. Great time. Box social. Yay! And dancing. You you can dance. If the album has the songs, you can definitely dance to it. I, I was going to sing uh, Safety Dance, but you know what? I'll just spare all of you. That will get a copyright strike because you'll sing it too perfectly. Thank you. There you go. But yes, if you've been to this podcast before, welcome back. We are glad to have you back as always. We hope you enjoyed this one as much as you enjoyed the previous episodes. But if you are new here, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you enjoy your stay. Uh, Chances are you don't know what we do on the podcast, so just in case, each week Savannah and I will take an album, be it completely at random, special occasion or anniversary type album, or even fan requests, which... We actually have a couple of those coming up in the next about month or two, so stick around for that. Regardless, we will take an album, discuss it at length, we rank the songs, and then we rate the record. All this time and you still just give me a golf clap. Yeah, that's it. I, I, yeah, I don't know. I have small, delicate hands. I don't want to clap too hard. You really need to build something. Just get drumsticks or cowbell or something. I don't know. Just get something. Just start smacking the desk. (laughs) All right, so today... We are going to be talking about Saul Williams and his album, The Inevitable Rise and Liberation of Tardust. Now, you can see that I, I wrote the, dis- the name in the description and the title, but I'm not going to gamble saying that out loud. No. Uh, so just going to call, call it Tardust. I, I'm sure you can see why it's all good. But before we discuss the album, though, each week, we'd like to read a little disclaimer to make sure that we're all cool with each other on the same page. Even if you have agreements, disagreements, whatever, we're not being dicks. We're just being cool and enjoying the show. So, Savannah, what is that disclaimer? <clears throat> You'd think I would have memorized this by now. Hell no. Anyway. The, f- the following thoughts and opinions we're going to discuss on Rate the Record regarding this album are strictly of our own personal interests. We are not professional music reviewers. We are simply two friends having fun discussing and listening to music. We encourage respectful discussion and friendly banter of each episode, but we do not condone and will not tolerate bullying or belligerence based on the opinions of ourselves or others. This podcast is a casual and for fun project, and you are welcome to take what we say regarding the albums we rate with a grain of salt and pepper you ruined it yeah i know i just i want to spice it up get it salt pepper spice it up yeah let's <laughs> say sea Ooh, salt or so himalayan funny. salt some different type of salt rock salt that you uh de-ice your driveway with i don't know something <laughs> take yeah, with a grain of rock salt this yes big. yes yes ice melting salt that probably if you ate it, it would just dissolve your tongue probably i can imagine burn like hell going down <laughs> yuck Alrighty then, so we're all cool with being cool with each other? Cool. Yes, that's three times in a row. So it is time <laughs> to talk about Sal Williams and the Tar Dust album, let's just call it that much. Yep. Sal Williams himself, Sal Stacy Williams, middle name Stacy, was born February 29th, 1972, so I guess he's only technically seven and a half years old. <laughs> I was going to make the same joke. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was born out of Newburgh, uh, Newburgh, New York, and was the youngest of three children. Williams has a BA in acting and philosophy. He later moved to New York City and got an MFA, which is pretty much like a master's for acting. Uh, yeah, he got that for acting, and he's actually starting a movie called Slam as well. Uh, Williams started performing poetry on open mic nights in 1995 and has won several awards for it. He would start performing musically in 1998 and would eventually release his debut LP, Amethyst Rockstar, in 2001, produced by Rick Rubin. Man, he's just, that guy's had his hand in every pie, I swear (laughs) to God. But today's album, though, uh, the Tardust album, 
Uh, it's his third studio album. He's had several EPs, but this is the third full length. It was released in November 2007 under Fader, uh, under Fader Label, which is an indie label, but produced by Trent Reznor of Nine Inch Nails. And if you listen to this album and didn't know that, you could probably hear his touches all over this damn thing. Grubby hands, yep. The album was originally released as a free download with a $5 pay option. Oh. 154,000 people downloaded the album within the first 30 days because it was only available for 30 days and then just over 28,000 paid the $5 myself included I actually remember when this album dropped it was around the same time as Year Zero so that's why everything kind of fell in place for me (laughs) and uh, if you didn't see the Year Zero episode and how much I love that one go ahead and watch that one later watch this one now the album received 4 out of 5 stars by All Music and it was placed at number 12 on the 101 Hip Hop Albums of 2007 according to Pop Matters and as far as I'm concerned no this album does not have any singles but it has a very notable U2 cover of Sunday Bloody Sunday. Cool. Mm-hmm. I did not know any of that stuff except the Trent Reznor thing. And like you said, if you listen to it, you're like, oh my God, there it is. <laughs> Especially because this album was made around the same time Trent was producing uh, Year Zero. And also Saul Williams toured with Nine Inch Nails and actually did some vocal tracks on Year Zero. So just a big whole tie-in thing here. So Cool. Very fitting to do this one today. I like that. (laughs) All right, so let's get on with talking about the album itself at length as we usually do. So track number one, Black History Month. Fucking catchy. It's incredibly catchy. (laughs) Um, I do want to point out that during the last, I I guess, verse, um, the backing vocals fucking kill me (laughs) because I'm listening to the actual, (laughs) yeah, in the in the left side, and I'm just imagining literally what it looked like recording that me in the studio. Like, I don't know if that's like modulated or if he's actually just singing it that way. He's probably just but, singing it that way. Oh my way. God, it, it killed me. The first time I was like, what the hell is this? And then after I'm like, okay, I'm kind of digging it. So <laughs> I I honestly, I don't have much to say about this song, um, but it's all positive. I, I like this song a lot. Excellent. That's the first thing I thought when I heard this track the first time too, because I mean, it immediately starts with the, like this dirty industrial hip hop beat. Like, I don't know how else to explain it. Just it sounds like rolling rocks down a hill type thing, like giant <laughs> boulders. Like it's it's insane. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it feels really dirty and different as compared to most hip hop. I really like that. Uh, yeah, uh, the the vocals sit a little heavy on the mix, though. I will say throughout, like especially through the verses, as compared yeah. to everything else going on, uh, it felt a little distracting. Uh, it might be because this track was fairly minimal in its production. Because, like, yeah, you have him rapping the occasional background vocals and harmonies, but then just, like, mainly that driving, distorted, like, rumbly drum beat. Yeah. Kind of just pushing everything along. That's pretty much all the song is, but it works. Um, yeah, I, I I kind of like how the the chorus has vocal harmonies, like, kind of echoing Saul's words. And it kind of has, like, this mocking tone to it. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was a fun little touch. I really enjoyed it. But then, yeah, as, we were, as you were just mentioning... Um, the acapella verse, like in the last third of the song, when you get that wobbly voice, like going yeah. on, like I really, I thought that was great. It was a really unique choice, as hip hop usually relies heavily on percussion. So the fact that you just have him acapella with this weird kind of melody being done by his voice in the background, which is literally just echoing the chorus. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's it's a really fun track. The only thing that bothered me again was the heavy vocals during the verses that was like a little too heavy in the mix. Yeah. Other than that though, yeah, great track. I like it. Um I, I know I've mentioned before, but when I'm listening to new songs, like they don't stick in my head because like I have to sort of listen to them over and over. Um as we're talking right now, I just hear the chorus in my head. I'm like, that's how you know that it's it sticks when it sticks in my head. <laughs> you know the so. banana peels are carefully placed, <laughs> place, place, place. I was so into it. I was so into it. That yeah, that was it. I nothing bad. Nothing bad. Good news. And uh, <laughs> hopefully it'll stay that way through the entire review. Uh, maybe not, but we, uh, we'll we will see. see. I mean, it could be a roller coaster, but it's not one that goes upside down. So I'm, I'm willing to take the ride. Good. Because there's no getting off at this point. Oh, shit. 
So song number two, Convict Colony. Um, there was a really cool drum pattern to open up this track. Uh, it adds a lot of excitement and energy. Like the last one was like had a, like a darker vibe to it, I guess, just because of that rumbly bass line again. But this one was like real drums and just really fast pick up the pace type thing. I really enjoyed that. Um, the synth horns sound all right in this. Uh, drives the track well enough. I just feel like a bass synth would probably suit it a lot better. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. The tone of the horns wasn't big for me. I wasn't super into it, but I allowed it to go just because, like, it was there driving the verse. It felt fine. Yeah. Um, My only real gripe of the song, I mean, there's a couple of gripes. It kind of gets repetitive after a while, but I think the biggest thing for me is, like, there's a sound of, like, a panning string bend going on on a guitar that's supposed to sound like a siren, I guess. Ah, yes, I noticed. I noted that as well. Uh, it, it gets a little grating after a while. I mean, I don't know. It could have been pulled off better, maybe with a different instrument or different sound or sample or something, but just just the way it was kind of got a little grating after a while. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I do want to compliment the way that the song ended because I just, I hate when it takes a huge jump off a cliff and then the song ends or the, you know, the knobs turn down too quickly. But I like the way it ended because it sort of faded on its own and it wasn't forcefully stopped so every time a song does that i take notice because it's uncomfortably uncommon now and i like that that it happened um the song does sound a little chaotic but like in a way that i could still follow so it was kind of like i don't know it's like read it reading a book in french like i can read french to a manageable degree but i, I can still get the, the gist of it you know no matter what else was in there that I didn't understand. Um, I uh, I did kind of grow tired of the piano and I thought it would have been nicer if it kind of peeked in and out. So kind of give you a little bit of break. But uh, when it came in and sort of stayed there, I was like, go away for a minute. <laughs> Just come back later. So... Well, it's interesting that you mentioned that too because like I did make a note about the piano as well because it's like this broken reverberated or kind of piano sound like it's not just straightforward it kind of cuts off a lot and glitches a little bit like as it rings out i didn't feel like it stood too heavy in the track so like i don't know i guess i disagree with you saying that it like i don't know having it wanting to leave too early type thing yeah because it kind of comes in towards the end of the track and it it just plays like minor parts so like i I wasn't like too bothered by it i guess yeah I, it adds like a neat texture to the sound too, like the way it just kind of, kind of occasionally cuts off as if like it's going through a broken microphone or something like that. Yeah, I always like that. Uh, and then yeah, as the song ended, they brought that bending fucking string back again. Just <laughs> I don't know, it kind of chipped the score a little bit. Um, yeah. Not not a whole lot, but I mean, if it was just the one part in the middle of the song, I think I would have been fine with it. But then, don't do it again. <laughs> I see, and with you and the piano, I don't even think I noticed that string part, or it was just... It's it the loud... There. It was like the... Ew, 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 ew. It was that noise. Yeah, I don't think that bothered me. For some <sighs> odd reason, it did not bother me. It stood yeah. out too heavy for me. <laughs> yeah. Didn't make note of it. Probably didn't even notice. Okay, I mean... We we man, we really have some differing opinions on certain sounds that we end up hearing on like every album we do. <laughs> I, I can't wait for our ratings of this album to be completely inverse. Just com- we'll only match on like the middle two. That's it. Oh, I guess we should call that now. I I was gonna say two. Yeah. Uh, two out of fifteen. I, I'm wait. gonna go. Th- I'm gonna go three because I'm a little optimistic. I was just about to say three before you did because I was. Gonna, I said wait. I had my hand up and yeah. then you said three. I was like yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm going to say three as well. Yeah, I, I want to be a little optimistic. And I, I feel like 15 songs, like, we're usually good with the longer track lists to get at yeah. least three. Yeah. So here's hoping. Fingers crossed. Going through the set list still, though, we go on to song number three, Trigger. Uh, so what do you got for this one? Um. Okay. I'm actually so. really curious to hear uh, your opinion on this one because of, like, the sampling used in it. Yeah. Okay. So... Um, I know that a lot of my uh, preferences don't err towards the side of hip hop and stuff like stuff like that. Um, I absolutely adore the sound of like late 80s, early 90s hip hop. And as soon as I heard this song, I was like, I love this. It's it's some of the best. I'm into it. I, I was so into it. I was into it from 
minute, like second one to three minutes, 54 when it ended. I, it kept me the whole time. And it's just even better that it's a public enemy sample. So it just makes everything so much better. Okay. I can see it. Yeah. I did not know that, but it, that the pieces are now fitting together. Um, I, yeah, I'm so on you. I have to read my extensive wording. So <laughs> you do, you do yours while I get my thoughts together. Uh, my notes kick off the same way pretty much yours do. I do love the old school feel of this track. It definitely has that like old school kind of like, b-boy kind of break beat old hip-hop type feel i don't know there's just like a bunch of words i could probably use for it. i love it um it's an obviously in large part that the as i said the sample is uh, public enemy i don't know the song though i should probably should have looked that up yeah and i should probably know this too because i really like public enemy um the only gripe i have with it is using a sample in the background and you singing over top of it if you pick a sample that has vocals that are just constantly going mm-hmm. it gets really distracting because you have Saul trying to sing his lines well, like, you know, Flavin Flav and Chuck D in the background are kind of, like, looped saying these lines over and over again. It just, I don't know. They don't really sit too well with each other. Mm-hmm. Although it works better in the chorus, I will say that much. Um, the the chorus sounds really powerful, and actually as the song goes through, it gets really powerful too. And again, to those who know, we don't really do uh, lyrical breakdowns. Uh, I didn't really do it for this album, but for this song in particular, because I liked how powerful the chorus felt, as I said. Um, I looked into it a little bit, and correct me if I'm wrong, maybe someone knows better than I do, maybe Saul Williams was in an interview, but I feel like this song is about how, like, you know, conservative white America views black people and how they teach their children about what black, like who black people are, like all oh, these thugs, these pimps, these drug dealers, these monsters in our street, that kind of thing. Uh, that's what I think this song is about, and just kind of addressing the issue. Mm-hmm. And so the fact that you have like par- powerful lyrical themes like that matched with like this really grand sounding chorus, and just yelling, you know, the trigger is you, the other thing is you that I can't, I'm not going to yeah. say that part out loud. Yeah. Uh, I think you can understand what I'm, I don't want to say. Uh, but yeah, like, I don't know that I, I really kind of dig that. I really appreciate that kind of thing. And as I said, the overlapping of the sample doesn't really feel bad in the course though, because there's just so much happening. If it feels like a, a, a march down a street type thing with like tons of people around you. Yeah. Maybe I, it's a little bit of a timely reference, but let's not focus on that part. <laughs> I, I can agree with that. Um, now, when you're referencing uh, Chuck D and Flavor Flav, like, you know, doing their thing in the back, I I don't know what part that is, only because I didn't know it was a sample. I don't know what song it is or anything. But I do have a note that just says, I like how this was produced so far and the background vocal saying trigger, trigger briefly. Like, I trigger, enjoyed trigger, that. Trigger, trigger, yeah. But, like, I don't. I don't know if that's part of I, everything I knew about this song is wrong now. Um, but I really like his voice in this song. Like I appreciated that for sure. There's and a I lot of emotion as a ghost or two, like especially when he gets to these parts where he kind of does this like weird mocking crying sound in the second verse. Yeah. I thought that was a really interesting choice too. Yeah. He's really good at doing stuff like that. He has a BA in acting and an MFA as well. So he I think he knows how to portray this emotion properly. And especially through music where you can't use your body for it, you have to use alternate means. Like being successful through that just really shows that you're good at what you do. And he's also a poet, like slam poet. So like he he's used to doing these kinds of things in front of people and using his voice to project on the people. So yeah. it, it comes off well in albums. And I've heard of his other albums too. Like I've heard older stuff and one of his favorite songs of mine comes off like an older album. Like he's really good at it back then too. So I mean, just like something he always carries well. Yeah. I, um yeah, I really like this song. I really liked what I just learned is a sample and now I kind well, of just want to go listen to a lot of music like that. The the, the <laughs> drums are yeah. part of the sample. Yeah. Uh, Flavor Flav saying, come on down. And then Chuck D from the hand of a, uh, who pulled the trigger, like yeah. him saying that line, uh, that's part of the sample. But then the trigger, 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 that's Saul Williams. Yeah. That's just, that's okay. him doing like a vocal harmony in the background. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, just like you, you can hear the bass, like the intro of the song is, is when you just hear the drums and then like the Chuck D and Flavor Flav yeah. voice, that is yeah. literally the loop that just keeps going through the entire song. 
You know, I'm starting to think that I might like Public Enemy now. <laughs> I think you might this, like Public Enemy. <laughs> this is definitely not the first time that this has been referenced in one of the episodes. I'm going to sit so. here and bounce bounce my chair, thinking how excited I would be to actually cover one of those albums on the show one day. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure, I'm down. Um, but yeah, no, I uh, I literally don't have anything bad to say about the song, and I listened to it more than three times. Not a lot. That's not a lot. But it's a lot for me, so. Well, and considering that you've only probably been listening to it like over the week type thing or yeah, even in the yeah. last few days. So that's still a lot for a few days. Yeah, it's, so it's one of those ones that you finish the album, you're like, I'm going to listen to this one one more time. I'm going to listen to it one more time. So. That was me with a handful yeah. of tracks on this album. <laughs> Granted, I've been listening to it since it's dro- uh, this album dropped like years yeah. ago, like 15 years ago. So, I mean, oh like. My God. I'm good for it. Oh, yeah. uh, the bridging portions are in the song are fantastic. Mm-hmm. I, I think the quieter portion that builds into like this really strong, energetic section. I think that's fantastic. It's really done well. It's a great rise in the track, and it works well with tying into the final chorus when he's literally just yelling the words of the chorus rather than just singing it. Yeah, I thought that was great. And like, yeah, like in that kind of like the heavy, heavy quote unquote portion uh, in like the stronger part before the final chorus. There's like this minor like chord progression sample kind of coming in and like descends a little bit keeps descending and repeats itself i thought that was a great touch and uh there's this like constantly punching bass that's behind it like everything about it just works it sounds really really good yeah yeah i i like it excellent i'm glad we can agree Woo! So now we move on to the cover of U2's Sunday Bloody Sunday. Uh, As I said, this is obviously a cover to those who know, obviously, if you've heard the song before. It somehow manages to be better in every way, shape, and possible, in my opinion. I Okay, so when I'm listening to this, I'm always listening to it on my headphones. I'm not you know, looking at the track list. So when this song started, I was like, is my like playlist on shuffle? And then as it's going, I'm like, oh shit, I know, (laughs) I know this song. So that was cool. Um, It holds up the original, but in a way it just sounds a lot more like modern. Like you could be singing same words, same everything, but it's a good example of a song being written about a specific event But someone else can apply that song to whatever they're familiar with or what affects them. And you can hear it in the emotion in their voice. And I like that. Yeah, it's it's definitely a song, especially like the lyrical themes like that feel up Saul's alley, especially the more you know about him, the more you realize like, yeah, this kind of fits his narrative a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, this is a really unique cover of this song. Like I'm pretty sure so many bands can do it so many different ways, but I love the audition, uh, audition, the addition of these uh, like these aggressive like choppy synths that kind of take over for the guitars instead from the like the original type thing. Yeah. Um, it adds like a lot more of a, a raw emotion to the track. Um, there's also a portion these like these old bridging portions where he's like, "How long? How long must we sing this song?" Like there's these like long drawn out buzzing synths that kind of go all, go along behind it. And I think those sound really good. It was an excellent choice to add. Rides really well through and kind of like joins portions of the song better. Because also it was, a, it was like a calm down point for the drums too. So like it just, it worked well uh, how it was there. There's not a whole lot I can say without just like talking about the original either, which I don't really want to break yeah, too far yeah. into the original. But I mean, go ahead and listen to U2 Sunday Bloody Sunday. Their version's great too. Like, don't get me wrong. I just really enjoy this one. Yeah. So I'll just wrap up my own points by just saying that, you know, this cover has Trent Reznor written all over it. You can definitely <laughs> tell. Um, he has a hell of a way of covering songs. He's covered many and they're amazing. He, he, I mean, the only he has his like own way of like making covers his own. I think mm-hmm. the only cover I can remember him doing was uh, Dead Souls by Joy Division. But that was like way more of like a straightforward kind of cover. <laughs> like a slowed down version. Uh, if you really want to hear like good examples of how he covers songs, listen to uh, his version of Metal by Gary Newman and then also listen to the original because two completely different tracks that, that both sound great, but his is just a cut above the rest. And yeah. also, if you want to go into old school tracks, for the movie The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo that he uh, composed, or like the, the soundtrack for he did a cover of Led Zeppelin's Immigrant Song, but got Karen O from the Yeah, 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 Yeah's yeah, to uh, do the vocals. Mm-hmm. It's intense. Yes, another modern twist to it. And just 
my point to all this is he's got a hell of a way of covering songs. You can hear it in this one. It's fantastic. But yeah, go listen to those tracks too. They're, they're fucking amazing, <laughs> especially Immigrant Song. That one is beyond yeah. belief. Nice. Um, so <laughs> just to sort of trail off of what, what you just said, or I, uh, I got in a few parts, I thought this sort of sounds like Trent Reznor vocals. And after looking at the personnel of the album, I was not far off. Um, I, whether you had mentioned his, um, his production beforehand or not, I definitely did not remember. So as I'm listening to the song, I'm like, God, this like really sounds like Trent reznor And then when I, I looked it up, I was like, ah, yes, I was correct. <laughs> yes, very so, much so. Yeah. And, um, I, I do have just one, one negative about this song. Um, I don't hate it. Um, sometimes I have preconceived notions about genres of music and I assume I'm not going to like it just based on the genre. And, uh, I hate being wrong. So I hate this thus far. The the last three, four songs, I hate them. I hate all of them. I <clears> bet. <throat> That's all. That's all. The mind and times of Savannah. Mm-hmm. And the ego. <sighs> I don't it's think they'll like, ever catch pro- properly catch on to how you like conceive these albums and songs. I've, one day we're gonna do a bonus show where I literally play your psychiatrist and try to break down your mental state going into these albums. Ah, uh, well, don't. <laughs> Pad of paper be, and pencil. Let's talk. <laughs> it shall be dangerous. It's just gonna be images of things. That's all I see. I see everything in just images. It's weird. So I'll just do a bunch of Rorschach tests for you, and you tell me what you see. <laughs> After the second one, you're like, "All right, we're gonna shut this down a little earlier than expected." Yeah, I can't. I can't do anything with this. We're just gonna cut off the episode. Bye. Subscribe. <laughs> gone. <laughs> you're not gonna fire me, are you? Record scratch, and then the episode ends. You're probably wondering how I got here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, we'll move on to song number five. Break. Uh, so. Uh, this song, I believe, is in 3-4 time. It could be 6-8. I don't really know music theory that way, but I know it's probably definitely 3-4. Great beat, by the way, to start the track on. You don't get to hear a lot of hip-hop that goes beyond 4-4, four, four, so, I mean, mm. it's always interesting to hear that. Really enjoy it. Uh, the synth that matches it is also really cool. There's, like, this breathy chord that comes in in the middle of, like, every bar. It's like, da! Like, I thought that was a super cool addition. Like, happens in every bar. It's really cool. Yeah. Sel's poetry really comes out in this one. Not to say that like the other tracks haven't had that and the other tracks won't have it, but there's something about the way this one is presented because there's overlapping vocals going through the entire verse. It's just like him kind of like interjecting on himself like over and over again. And like yeah. some lines go on a little longer than they probably should, but it, it, it works. It fits. You can tell that there's the, a narrative going on. It's not too complicated. It's not like too overwhelming. Like... It's hard to explain the way I'm seeing this in my head, but I just think the way he presents this one really works. And this is the most poetry-based song he's got on his album so far, and I really like it. Um, like like you said about the the uh, sort of layering, interjecting on himself. I thus far I like the use of the layered background vocals, where it's something over here, something over there. Then you have the sort of the main. Uh, vocals that you're supposed to listen to but if you kind of look beyond that there's so much underneath it um i do enjoy the use of left and right punches of sound just even if it's minimal because it kind of creates sort of that at like that physical atmosphere where it's like it's not just you know mono coming through your speakers it's like something going on around you physically and i i really enjoy that and I like how he, he will sing a little differently between tracks, because if it was just the same so far, I definitely would have been bored by now. But it's it's different. He just makes use of the music. And it's I don't know. It's just very interesting. That's why I have a kind of a hard time calling this a hip hop album sometimes, yeah. because there's you can definitely hear several different styles, but it's all based around hip hop, I guess. But yeah, he's not always Ne- like necessarily or technically rapping so I mean yeah like I, you, you'll you hear like a change in his vocal tone his vocal style and like as we hear coming up like he has very clean singing moments coming up in the album that are just fantastic we'll get there when we get there yeah 
Um, and actually, speaking of using different styles, the chorus feels very punky to me. Yeah. It's like, dun, 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 and like he's just kind of like, dun, 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 break, dun, dun, dun. like I don't know. There's just something about it that feels very punky. I kind of like it. It's an interesting choice to throw in. Uh, it just sounds very raw. So I don't know. I always enjoy little things like that, especially if they're done well. Yeah. And the song mainly rides kind of like the same way all the way, not all the way through, but like through the first half of the song, I guess. Like, mm-hmm. you know, your verse, chorus, verse, chorus, and they kind of run the same a little bit. Uh, the second half has this kind of like cool build up feeling. It's just too bad that it doesn't build up like too much, though. Like, I don't know. There's a feeling of rise, but there's no proper conclusion to it, I guess. Yeah. Um, you know, you have some ambient noises that kind of quietly swell in, which kind of adds a good atmosphere. And there's some guitars thrown in, so that's it's. They sound cool. They they're kind of uneasy though, but I appreciate what they add. But again, I just kind of wish it went somewhere rather than just like, oh, it feels like it's building to something. Oh, song's over. Yeah, I uh, I I guess my last note is just that I I liked the main riff, uh, or I guess the sort of basis of the song a little more than sort of the loud wild part um but uh I'm, I'm glad it didn't make up most of the song but i feel like it would have been boring if it was just that main riff the whole time so it needed sort of that mm-hmm. but uh but yeah that was the only thing i was kind of like dis- dissatisfied with i was like i just yeah that was all. well at least for the most part it sounds like you're having a positive experience with this album at the very for the most part i i don't want to spoil anything but side a side b that's all we'll uh, side b is not so bad we'll get there though we will get there yes uh so we are at song number six uh again not entirely saying this name we're just going to call this one tardust all right n tardust <laughs> i'm not gambling with that fucking word nope no nope. we have no right to now, this is where I feel like I'm probably going to get some sort of disagreements. It's not necessarily from you, but, like, maybe people who like this album or like this song in particular. Okay. I feel like this is the least inspired production on the album so far. Yeah. Um, I don't know. You have this, like, buzzing synth that pushes a nearly monotone melody, and then Sal is speaking fairly monotone on top of that. So just, I don't know. It's it's It feels the most flat so far that this album has kind of presented to me and just... Mm-hmm. It wasn't really exciting to listen to it. Uh, the drum machine sounds don't really do all that much for me in this one. Uh, so that's kind of unfortunate too how that took a little back. Um, but the chorus is probably the most interesting part because it kind of brings out this cool like hip-hop R&B, R&B kind of vibe. Mm-hmm. So I appreciate that, that a little more. It sounds cool, a little more chill. But also it's the most interesting part of the track because I love how there's this, this like call and answer in the vocals and the lyrics that kind of discourage you from answering when I say <laughs> and you say nothing and then it's just like emptiness but then there's that last line you say nothing and nothing and you hear some guy in the background yell nothing he's just like shut up yep um, uh, wait, that was want- my favorite part of the song I was I was just gonna say a uh, fun little behind the scenes on that um, Saul said that that was kind of like ad-libbed a little bit and one of the guys he was working with on that song yelled nothing in the background as a joke and so then Saul in his most like prince type impression just said shut up and they loved it so much and laughed their asses off that they kept it in the album yeah I as soon as I heard that the first time I'm standing outside waiting waiting for my boss and uh yes I am poor send me money um (laughs) me too and uh (laughs) and I ended up listening to that and I'm just breaking out laughing because that that is just very funny. It was so unexpected that yeah. it, I I am, that was my favorite part of the song. Um, I I like how it feels like this this song is sort of telling a story, um, whether like I guess lyrically. Um, I uh, I like the beat and the vibe and tempo of the chorus. But I definitely liked the chorus, more, like the chorus music, more than I liked the verse. Says I guess. No, I, I I get that. I think we're kind of on the same page for that. Yeah. I did enjoy the chorus a lot more because again, like that just kind of chill, smooth R and B type vibe. I don't know I liked it. Yeah, and um, so I don't know how how to describe how I like certain songs, but I like when you can run the verse right into the chorus. Like they don't have the same sound or like the same beat or anything, but there isn't that sort of 
awkward transition from verse to chorus or vice versa, where it's like you go into something. I, it's very difficult for me to describe without an audio example, but the chorus beat ran right into the bridge. It didn't hard stop. And then the bridge started. It just sort of flowed right into it. And when that happens, I notice because I don't hear it often at all. And I really appreciate that. That was something that stuck out to me for sure. Like yeah, it's lot. not messing around too much. It's just immediately just right into the chorus. Yeah. Yeah, I guess there's that to appreciate about it. But yeah, just, I don't know. Wasn't too big on the verses, though. I, I tried to yeah. be, but I just wasn't. And I also yeah. wasn't really too big on like the vocoder towards the end of the song. Or just those very mechanical harmony type sounds and everything like that while he was like kind of saying the last lines of the song. Yeah. Wasn't too big on that. I don't know. Maybe I'm just being picky, but just, I don't know. This whole song didn't really sit too well with me. Yeah. You, you're you allowed to be picky because it is called Rate the Record, so. Absolutely. And I'm pretty sure I've done that more than once in the past. <laughs> yep. Oh, and and we shall continue. There are some picky moments still coming up on the album as well. Yeah. And maybe I'm just mad because I can't say the whole name of the song. No, I'm <laughs> no, I'm, I'm fine with that, really, though. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we'll move on to Lucky 7 DNA, uh, or in my case, Unlucky 7. Uh-oh. Nah. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this one. Mm? I was going to say, should I go first? Is this Should this be a compliment sandwich? Uh, well, tell you what. I'll, I'll, I'll talk a little uh, poo-poo on it, and then you can... Uh, you can sprinkle some powdered sugar on the poo-poo. I, I hope so. Okay, continue. This one was another fairly kind of minimal production. I, I'm not... I, I don't dislike minimal produced hip-hop or music in general. Actually, there's a lot of uh, cool music that I like that is minimal, but just this one doesn't work too well this time. This one just doesn't sit well with me. It just feels like some ideas that were meant to be added into a full track rather than just being its own track. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't too fond of that. Uh, I'm not very fond of the the big vocal pitch down through the verses so it's just like this really deep bassy voice i'm not huge on that although i do like the random ambient sounds and glitches kind of thrown in through the track it adds something at least a little interesting into the soundscape yeah and i mean the chorus just plays on the verse with a little more added to it i like it enough i suppose but i mean it kind of loses its luster before too long i don't know i'm just there wasn't enough in this track for me to be like, this is interesting, or I'm going to listen to this again. Actually, I, I haven't really liked this song at all for a long time. Yeah. So coming back to listen to it again, I'm just like, oh, I forgot there was a reason why I didn't listen to this one that much. Yeah. Um, This one had to grow on me. Like, yeah, I, I hear it. Um, It does sound like it's ever so slightly panning left to right. Like, it just kind of feels wonky, I Probably. guess. Probably. Um, <laughs> after the chorus in the right ear, I don't know what it is, but my brain is like, those sound like bagpipes. Don't know what it is. Don't, yeah. It's just like a, I don't know. I fucking hate bagpipes. So whenever I hear whatever sounds like that, I'm like, uh, I, uh, stop it. I'd have to go back and listen to know what it was. Cause I actually don't recall it. Yeah. I, I wrote the note the first time, listened to it two more times and I heard it each time. So I think that you might, it is after the chorus. So there's that. Um, and, uh, again, I do like that the vocals are different and this album kind of feels more like a mixtape than an album made by the same person, I guess, because I'm so used to listening to the same vocal stylings from beginning to end. So this is pretty cool. Um, but uh, but yeah, like I said, it had to grow on me and it was just one of those ones where it plays halfway through and I'm like, oh shit, I should be reviewing this because it just sort of kind of zoned out during it. I don't know. I hate saying that. Well, I mean, if that's what it is, if, if you're either enjoying it or something is like catching your attention about it, then yeah, it's yeah. very easy to like not write the review for it. I mean, uh, there's a song coming up, actually a couple... That happened, and I had to, like, listen to the song three times before I was like, I have to write words. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's, you just kind of, zil- like, I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't grab you by the shirt collar and say, listen to this. It just yeah. kind of, like, taps you on the shoulder and go, next time, buddy. Next time. <laughs> yeah, this one's a little more chill, I guess. Mm-hmm. There's some really cool aggressive tracks coming up, though. And uh, next one, kind of like that, I guess. Uh, I'm assuming that you're done talking about DNA. I am. 
as am I. That's fine by me. So, song with... Uh, this, no, there's not really aggressive moments in this one. But number eight, WTF, what the fuck? But it is just written as WTF explanation point. And my very first word, or very first line, oh, hey, Trent, because he's the he's the very first voice that opens the track. That was the very first thing I wrote. Is that Trent Reznor at the beginning? <laughs> I'm fighting every war at once, and I'm and I'm winning. You can't think of me as you did in the beginning. Yep. That's what he says. And he also does backup vocals on this track, too. Very evident. Yes. Uh, this is uh, definitely an improvement with this track, definitely over the last one coming off of DNA, because, again, I wasn't that big of a fan of it. Mm-hmm. I love the chill beat. presents itself a little... Uh, a little better with the uh, buzzy synth in that really kind of dreamy piano that kind of plays through the verse. I really like the way that sounds. Uh, Saul sounds great vocally in this track. That very nice, clean, soothing kind of tone really suits him well. I mean, I like other things that he does too, but this one he just has a perfect voice for. Uh, the chorus is a lot of fun. There's an organ that pops up in it, so I'm really kind of fond of that one too. The vocal harmonies are fantastic. That's also where Trent harmonizes, so yeah, that's... But just there's one line they sing like towards the last like part of like the first half of the chorus, I guess, where like the note kind of goes, but like it's harmonized and I kind of like the way it's harmonized. It just sounds really cool. Mm -hmm. I'm also not good at explaining that kind of stuff, but you can feel you can feel the like the, the entire track. From beginning to end kind of build and build and build slowly. So it's not just like it's building in one portion like. One of the things I noted, too, is that there seems to be more being added to uh, the, the percussion of the song as the song progresses. Mm-hmm. So just the entire thing is slowly building, and I kind of like that. How it, and it leads to this very long, kind of grandiose ending, kind of stretched out a bit. Uh, it is The last half of the song is great. It's fine. It probably goes on a little too long, but I will say if you, you can cut off like a minute or so and probably be perfect... But I do like the vocal play that happens all throughout the ending. Yeah. Uh, like, I thought it was really fun. He, he kind of keeps adding stuff and adding harmonies to stuff. So, I mean, at least something is constantly interesting. Yeah. But I still think it would have been better, like, just a minute shorter. I agree. Um, mm. So, I really like the addition, or words... I really like the addition of a clear light piano against like the rough beat. I always like that sort of light and dark sort of contrast in the same song. Mm-hmm. But to me, this song feel this song feels dark and brooding, like somebody walking down the street with their hood up and they probably have a knife. <laughs> so that's this song to me. Um, speaking of the vocal harmonies, uh, sort of going down, I, my favorite part of the song was the downscale woes in the background at the end. Oh yeah. I really, I, as soon as I heard that, I was like, I like that very much. And, um, I was pleased that there was a differentiation of beat that came in about three quarters of the way into the song, but it just wasn't enough to keep my attention for five and a half minutes. So I definitely agree that it may have run on just a little too long. Yeah. Well, I mean, at least we can kind of agree on that. As I said, I do like the vocal play at the end, but yeah, just it's one of those things that felt a little too stretched. Yeah. Probably more than it had to be. Yeah. It's uh when, like I've said before, whenever I have to go in and see how much time is left in the track, that's when I know I'm like, okay, this is about the time my brain's like, I've had enough. <laughs> I try to avoid doing that so much, but sometimes oh, it can be hard, to, especially if it's a longer track. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that was it for me. That was it for me. No, that's fine. That's, then that was it for me, too. <laughs> Alrighty, then. So we are... Well, we're more than halfway through the album now. I didn't even point that out, but that's okay. Song number nine, Scared Money. Uh, Super chill sample to start off this one. Mm -hmm. Uh, Cool horns, uh, smooth string bass behind it, soft percussion. It sounds like this was written in a small hut, like down in Louisiana or something, like in 35 degree temperature. I don't know. It it has that vibe where it's just like you feel hot listening to the song. Like you feel sweaty (laughs) listening to this song. Yeah, I did know. I did note the dull analog sound of the music that I really liked. Yeah, it, it, I I feel like it's probably a sample. I, like it's probably got to be. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it feels a little too analog to have just been sat around and done in a studio. I could be wrong though. I I really don't know. Yeah, yeah. What I think is really cool though is that like this song has a change. It has multiple change ups actually. So kind of like 
keeps your expectations from sitting too still, I guess. Mm-hmm. Because like there's this there's this change up that happens about halfway through and I mean it just keeps getting interesting and not so stale. There's a really cool a cappella part that kind of leads into yet like another change up. Really demented glitchy carnival type feel. Like I don't know, that's that's one part that I heard that I thought was particularly interesting. Um for some reason I didn't write any notes about the 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 change ups and how they sound all together. Like I just wrote the one note about that, so I don't know how I missed writing about that. It must have been one of those moments where I was listening to it and forgot to write anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and legitimately didn't make it to the episode, so sorry. But it is it is cool. I love how everything keeps changing up. It's it's unique, it's different. Again, kind of uh changes your expectations all the time. If this song kind of gave me the effect of like if you were to smoke peyote or something like that, you know, just because <laughs> you, you start out with that like kind of that chill like vibe. It's the, it's the and, hand drums. And then a bunch of weird stuff starts happening. And then the song ends by going back to that kind of like chill sample again. Yeah. So no, it was really interesting in that way. Um, I do want to mention that the vocals don't have like the breaths or like that sort of spitting sound cut out. So it doesn't sound super polished, which I think does add to that sort of analogy, you know, yeah. hot, hot feeling. Um, but uh, I, I found that the music stopping and then starting up differently while the vocals still go on, it kind of amplifies the importance of the vocals because the music is able to sort of go away and come back differently. But then I then I just I noted noted that the music just casually goes back to the original riff at the end. It's kind of like just walks back in with its hands in his pockets and just whistling like nothing even happened. I was here the whole time. And that's what I'm saying. It kind of felt like a trip because like so many weird <laughs> things happened. But then like that was that sample in the beginning and end is like the sandwich there. Like everything else was just like your trip is here. But this is yeah. the beginning and end of the ride. Yeah. And it. I found that pretty straightforward it was just you know something you could just walk right through and you know come out the other end and i did like the eighth note like bang bang bangs and it didn't take away from the underlying riff it sort of i don't know it it added an intensity that eventually would sort of come in around the middle so yeah i don't know it was some sort of weird for musical foreshadowing i don't i don't know what it was but i was into it so no it it makes sense because as i said it gets kind of weird and hard to explain i called it a glitchy demented carnival so i mean like (laughs) fair enough who the hell knows if i'm right i don't know what i'm talking about (laughs) why do you listen to me (laughs) so i guess we can move on now it's a very unique track i did enjoy it but we'll go on to track number 10 raw Mm -hmm. which kind of acts as a ballad in a way but not quite Sometimes like, I feel like you're reading my notes. <laughs> well, okay, I, I'm, th- I'm thinking about it because the opening lyrics of the song is, what's a song if you can't fuck to it? Yeah. And, like, so I'm thinking, it's like, okay, this song was probably definitely meant to fuck to. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's got that kind of, like, chill, very intimate vibe, very bassy, just minimal kind of, like, background bass percussion type thing. Yeah. It's probably the most minimal track on the entire album, and that's saying a lot considering there's still another song coming up that feels minimal, too. It sounds really intimate, like it's being performed just for you in a very personal space. Yeah, in like a really, really dim lit room. Yeah, and the vocal harmonies are nice, though. I kind of like those. Uh, the quiet breathing between phrases, though, adds kind of an anxious feeling. Like, between phrases in the second verse, you just hear... <sighs> and I was just like, this is getting weird. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't like that. At least it wasn't loud, so it's not like right there in your ear. Yeah. And uh, there's like this harmonious singing at the end of the track, too, that just feels so out of like left field, out of place thing. It's really eerie, but it's also kind of a pretty touch to the song. I don't know. It's like everything about this is a little unsettling, but at the same time, like very intriguing. It To me, it sounded like it was going to drop into a really heavy industrial riff and then just like start scream singing. Or it's like you kind of get in, like they lure you in because it's all nice and soft. And then bam, it's like it really intense. It That not at all what yeah, happened. You're, you're thinking it's just going to be like, I want to fuck you. And then I'm fucking <laughs> you now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's, it's <laughs> obvious that the message is far more important than the music because that's really well yeah because there's not a lot going on 
Yeah. And um, I feel like I'm listening to something I'm not supposed to. Like I have, you know, a glass cup to the wall and I'm listening to people talking in the next room. And it, it felt like I was intruding on someone else's intimate affair. Um, but the the ooze at the end, definitely not my favorite, but it's a short song. I could get through it. That's the part I found kind of like eerie and unsettling. Yeah. Cause it, it was so like off chord and like off key, but like it, it worked for me, I guess. I thought it was interesting yeah. enough. I kind of like when musicians can do that and properly. Yeah. So no, I, I kind of dug it a little bit. Yeah. It, I don't know. This uh, wasn't my favorite song, but I think it was just I wasn't expecting it. So it really caught me off guard when it started. Yeah, it, it'll do that. And <laughs> there's another song that kind of does that coming up, but we, once again, we'll get there when we get yep. there. And the yep. song was pretty short, too. So, I mean, just not a lot to say about it. Yeah, not even three minutes. Yeah, just a 250 or something along the lines of that. Dead on. Okay, so song number 11, Skin of a Drum, uh, a very large display of percussion to start the track off, and it feels very fitting given the title of the track, Skin mm-hmm. of a Drum. <laughs> uh, there's this, uh, like this string bass that kind of drives behind the verse. It's really cool. Uh, it's not too intense or stand out, but you can kind of hear it doing its thing. I really like how just it fits in properly. There's like these, these really like anxious quick strings that kind of keep coming in and out the guitars ascending over a descending melody kind of adds a lot of like anxiety and tension on its own mm-hmm. but it's it makes the song more exciting because like you have the uh, these descending melodies these ascending guitars just everything again feels very just dis- disjointed and out of place but i'm still very intrigued to want to listen to the rest of it because i'm just like where is this going yeah and even on that note too like it's interesting how the chorus kind of changes that up and kind of calms down a little bit. It's really pretty, but it also sounds very sad, very, like, melancholy. It feels like a settling point. There's soft harmonies in the instrumentals, which are really peaceful, but, again, very sad. And just the final portion of the song, too, being sung, is just very beautiful. Like, the song kind of takes you on a bit of a roller coaster because the, the first half is, like, the weird, intense kind of stuff, like, disjointed, as I said. And then it just kind of, most of the song after that is just, like, really pretty again yeah. sad but just everything works again i like it's hard to explain it's hard to say anything new um on that note exactly uh i don't want to repeat anything you've said so i really only have a couple notes on this my apologies um, i should let you talk first oh, no that's that's fine no one wants to hear me um at the beginning those bells or the glockenspiel or i nice texture it added i really really like that I haven't heard that in, oh God, let alone the rest of the album or the beginning of the album thus far. I haven't heard that in like a very long time in any music I've heard. So it definitely caught my attention from the get go. It was nice that it was at the very beginning. And you're talking about the ascending, descending. Uh, I feel some tension because there, there's something in the background as I'm listening to this, I wasn't sure what it was. Um, in the background of the verse that raises and then stops. So it never really lets me down. It just sort of raises me and raises me. And I'm just like, I just need some sort of resolution that I never actually receive. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like that, oh my God, like a sort of anxious, um, like a literal roller coaster feeling. Yeah. And because you're wondering what's going to come beyond all this like descending, ascending stuff. You're just yeah. like, what is going to happen as it goes along? Uh, again, kind of divert your expectations going into the chorus, but I feel like in a good way, though. Like, it's kind of nice how there was, although, again, I'll use the word sad, but even though it feels that way, it's kind of nice that it was like a smoother ride at that point. So you weren't just constantly fretting about, like, these really weird sounds of, like, the bass going, and then the guitar's like, but, like, they're playing over top of each other. Yeah. So it can get, like, yeah, just really disorienting and weird, but I like it. Yeah, I uh, I didn't hate it. It was definitely interesting, and it, it's one of one of those tracks where it's like I have to go back and listen to it a couple of times and sort of understand what it is, and then I can sort of wrap my head around it. So yeah, yeah. and I uh, I I kind of forgot how much I like the song because uh, like it's been a while since I sat through this album. It's been a handful of years. So coming back to this one was like, wow, I forgot how cool this one was. Because if I come back to this album, it's usually for like a few tracks and you'll see what those few tracks are when we rank the songs. Yeah, yeah. But then I came back to this one. I was like, oh, yeah, this one. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, that, uh, yeah, that was it. 
Perfect. <laughs> We're almost there. We're almost at the end now. We're getting uh, three quarters of the way through the album. Mm-hmm. I No, that's that, that's not true. I don't know math. Whatever. <laughs> We're getting four-fifths of the way through the album. There you go. I can yes. do things. <laughs> Number 12, the uh, other ballad, I guess. I guess this one's more of a ballad. No One Ever Does. Okay, well, I'm just going to say just the couple of points that I have. Um, not particularly my favorite. Um, I don't hate it, but I probably wouldn't put this album on and go, yeah, I'm going to listen. I'm going to pick this song. So probably not. Um, and if this was a straight up concept album, I feel like this song would be the I'm realizing that the people around me don't really care for me. The sort of sad part before, you know, the heroes rise. And um, that's kind of how I I felt from that. It's just, it seemed too slow and too like, I don't know, sad for how I felt about the previous, what, 10 songs. So I don't know. I felt this, I felt this song kind of added, um, like if you go by the last four songs on this album, this this song kind of added a good placement of the last four tracks because the last four tracks kind of like there's a progression of emotion that's a very kind of like linear type line because this one yeah is like the sadder kind of downtrodden minimal track. Yeah. Uh, the next we'll get to banged and blown through, but like that one still has like a sadness and to it, but like there's like more of a liveliness to it. So like you know you're picking yourself back up, but like something's still not right. And then, like, Race to Be Lowered gets aggressive, and then Ritual's fucking... We'll, we'll get there, because, I, God, I got a f- couple things to say about that one. I like that one. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, like, uh, this is, yes, another very soft, very intimate-sounding track. Uh, I I do like this one. It's, again, not my favorite either, but, I mean, I actually do like this one. Uh, yeah. It's another track showing off Saul's very clean, soft singing voice, and I think that's great. And, like, you have this, like, light as a feather, electronic piano sounds, the humming bass that feels warm. Like, this whole track just kind of feels like a hug. Yeah. <laughs> Everything about it is so warm, although the content might be cold. Something about it just feels a little more embracing, even if it's not in the best kind of way. <laughs> um, even when, like, the distant reverber- reverberated guitars come in about halfway through, there's also these harmonized vocals that kind of come in while he's singing the, like, the hook, no one ever does. Uh, they echo through the chorus. It's a really great choice to kind of fill out the soundscape, dis- despite how f- uh, minimal this song is. So I don't know. I feel like there was like a lot of good choices and layering in this song, despite the fact there aren't many layers. So I, I thought it was kind of a clever composition, I suppose. Um, I did not feel the warm hug, but I did feel the cold. It was felt a the cold, cold hug. A cold, bony hug. Come here and give grandma a hug now. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And then when he hugs you, his hands fall off his body because he's so old. No, dust. grandma, don't touch me. Exactly. <laughs> but you, you're cold and bony. Yes, that that to a T. <laughs> that sound clip is how I felt. Don't be an ignorant little shit. Give me a hug. <laughs> <laughs> Just doing this for some reason, like a T Rex. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just like the hands are all the way up here. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, ah, yes. Visual <laughs> but no one gag. ever does. <laughs> Visual gags. Oh, that is the first pun or pun song title of the album. I'm so surprised that we both lasted this long. So am I. But now that we're getting to track 13, I feel like my brain is banged and blown through. <laughs> All right. That's it. I'm out of here. Peace. <sighs> yes. Track number 13, banged and blown through. What do you have for it? I can see this being a Nine Inch Nails song. Yeah, um, yeah. I can definitely hear it. Um, there, <laughs> For me, there wasn't much happening in the song that wasn't just sort of repeated to the end. It just seemed very um, sort of just lyrics on, like, I don't, I don't want to say lyrics on a beat because that's just literally describing a song. <laughs> but like when you just have sort of the bass beat and then you're doing other things over top of it. It just kind of seemed very stale at a certain point, I guess. Um, maybe that's not the the correct word, but whatevs. Um, and there wasn't much excitement or change for me. It was just sort of the same beat at the same tempo. And it, this one felt much longer than it actually was to me. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. I, I quite enjoy this track. Yes, it is fairly repetitive. There's not a whole lot that to carry it through. But I don't know, something about it and just the way it sounds. And also, this song is like nothing but 
pretty much real instrumentals all the way through. Like even like the string section is like real strings. Like so, th- obviously there's like some electronic instruments in this, but like it's all based on like real acoustic stuff. So I thought that was really cool. Maybe that's what draws me so much to it. Cause and I, I I love how the song relies on the drums a lot too, and this like really weird drum pattern. And it's real drums too, like acoustic drums sounds really good. They sound very distant too, like they were recorded halfway down a hallway. <laughs> Uh, I really like that, and it's nice how the bass kind of complements that too, with its kind of like low playing groove. I thought that's really cool. Uh, there's these swelling strings that kind of pop up uh, in the background and add some appropriate tension to the track. I thought that was really interesting, so there's at least something going on there. Uh, the programming on the quick beeping synth uh, allows for like the, the verse to flow even better, kind of just like carries it through like a conveyor belt almost, like a bumpy conveyor belt all the way to the chorus. <laughs> The chorus is really pretty. I love it. I love the real string sound, and I love the chord progressions. Uh, the riding on the high, uh, the ri- yeah, the riding on the ride symbol. There you go. I'm very repetitive. Uh, yeah, the chord progressions, harmonies, the vocals. It's quite literally to me the most golden moment on the album. Everything is so clean, so well done. Uh, the, the the melody and the chord progressions are just beautiful to me. Just I don't know. I I really really like it. Um. And the the second verse builds up heavier than the first, as it should. Like, most verses should do that anyway. It's like second verses or third or whatever. Or if you're Bob Dylan, eighth or ninth verse. <laughs> Remember that one. Uh, I, uh, d- I don't. Thank God. It definitely added emphasis on everything. The only gripe I really have with the song is, like, the ending kind of synth solo, I guess. Mm-hmm. Like, after the final chorus. Like, it didn't really sit all that well with me, but I love how it extends the uh, progression of the chorus itself. So it wins points with me for that because I just like hearing it. Yeah. <sighs> I talk a lot. It is, it is nice to hear your opinion of a song that you like and that I didn't really like. Because sometimes you bring up things that I either didn't, I like I don't appreciate or I just did not even sort of bring my attention to so you'll point out all of these things in the background and all of these sort of mechanisms going on that i'm like yeah i just heard beep bloop whatever that was it and you're just like there's so much more to that so i uh there are there are songs that i'm like you know what this might be worth going and giving a second third fourth listen to so yeah i'm learning but that well, was all that I had for that. Hopefully you will, and we'll redux the album one day, and scores will be so much higher. Ah, yes. In the 95s. Ooh, S tier, huh? <laughs> we shall see. Well, we're almost at the end of the album. Mm. This is like the longest one we've done in a while. Yeah, yeah. Song number 14, Raised to be Lowered. This, to me, is the most Nine Inch Nails sounding track on the entire album. It, yeah. it really has to be. The bass and the piano uh, work very well together uh those guitars are the most trent thing you could ever ask to have on a track like (laughs) like he has a specific style of playing a sound a progression like just you just always know it's him because he always goes for something that sounds like it's like off key or like a really weird kind of like chord that's always him and so you can always tell i love it it's fantastic i hate that i'm being biased and that gave it more points but it sounds good what can i say like it's not that i'm just giving it points because it's trent yeah. Uh, there's these like slow, chunky, echoey drums that are a great choice. Definitely adds like a heaviness to the track, which I thought was really cool and kind of needed actually. Uh, catchy chorus, good hook. Uh, this song works as an industrial rock slash hip hop track. Like you can literally combine the two styles and not even ask questions because it just works that way. Yeah. I have more notes, but I'll let you keep going though. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so I didn't hate it, but there are like half a dozen songs that I'd want to listen to before this, but like still enjoyed it. Um, I wish the vocals were more upfront than the music. Um, with the loud music over the vocals and the whoa, whoa, and then the spoken background vocals on top of that, I just wanted to yell, that's enough. That's, <laughs> there's, there's too much, too much going on so that uh that was aggressive into my ear holes um but the piano riff was a welcome break and whatever the hell chaos came before it so that was nice that was nice that was nice 
I really like how Saul's able to match, like, intensity and emotion of the instrumentals with his voice. So, like, he can either go really quiet or pick it up, start yelling, sing yeah. a little louder, everything like that. Or even do, like, that kind of, like, weird whiny mocking voice he did earlier in, like, the album, stuff like that. Yeah. Like, it, no matter what's happening in any portion of this particular track, or, like, literally most of the tracks on the album, he's really good at matching the emotion and intensity. So, like, you're never worried too much about something feeling, like, mismatched. Yeah. If anything, it's usually the instrumental that's mis- mismatched. It's like not carrying on with him. Yeah. And originally I did feel like this track probably went on like a little too long. Mm-hmm. But it has something of like a dark and sexy vibe to it going into like the, the last portion of it. Yeah. New sounds are added to it. So it stayed interesting long enough right to the last note. So I kind of scratched up my note that it was too long. I was like, you know what? I kind of liked what was happening. Yeah, and I'm actually really surprised that that did not occur to me. I didn't think of that even once. I've listened to the song three, four times, didn't even notice how long it was, so not too bad. Um, That must mean it's doing something just right. Yeah, I'd say so. Very good. Okay, we get into the grand finale of the album track number 15, The Ritual. Oh, I got some notes for this one. but I, I am looking forward to hearing yours first because I know that you are just chomping at the bit to get it. Okay, well, I, I don't want to mislead you in saying like, oh my God, the best song ever. Like, I really like this track and yeah. I, I have six points. So, I mean, if you want to get yours out of the way first, now's a good time. Uh, you know what? I'll, I'll get a couple. I'll get a couple. Um... So I I found as the song went on and the vocals went on, they sound more desperate or pleading, but like not in a whiny way. And I think that kind of goes on with your last point about sort of matching the tone with the vocals. I I like that. That was cool. Um, (laughs) What what sounds like a slight record scratch, um, just side note, it's what I assume lasers sound like. Because when I heard it, all I thought were, ooh, those sound like lasers. And then I, I think thought, I know wow. the sound you're talking about, yeah. too. Then it I comes, thought, like, at the end of almost every drum phrase. Yeah. Like, what am I, 12? Um, <laughs> so there's so much being added in, like clapping, piano, vocal embellishments. There's, it, it's like you have this, this food dish and it's just like a steak. But you could add so much garnish to it that would just amp it up so much more that it's not just a steak on a plate. There's like a little bit of this, a little bit of that, you know, a little bit of baby carrots. Everything is just delicious. And it makes such a better meal when you have those things. So I I really enjoyed like the, the vocal embellishments for sure in the background, like the entire album up until now, I've really appreciated just the creativity of using the voice to you know either mi- not really mimic but i guess replace an instrument yeah and i like that a lot well being a musician and poet i'm pretty sure he knows how to really use his voice as an yeah. instrument too so that yeah, um, it's yeah really i'm glad that works out mm-hmm. definitely so with my my uh things now um <laughs> so the aggressive there's an aggressive drum machine that kind of just drives pretty much the entire track i guess um it's a really good uh choice considering like what follows in this track as well so it like thematically and tonally matches everything that happens there's this buzzy synth bass that sounds so damn good more please i love that because i think it just sounds i don't know what that synth is i don't know what the sound setting is i wish i knew so i could use it in every single song that i write (laughs) And yeah, like again, Saul is really good at matching energy and emotion as we were just talking about because like this song kind of takes you on a bit of a roller coaster a little bit, although it's more of like an like a, a really long incline and then like this kind of not super hard decline, but like it's hard to explain. It's kind of like it goes down a little bit, but then goes in this very dark force. Well, let's get there for a minute. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how else to explain it, so I'm going to try my best because the verse feels very mysterious to me. Because he mainly sings or, like, raps, depending on how you look at it, with his, like, very, like, kind of quiet, low, lethargic type voice. Like, he's kind of, like, almost mumbling his way through it a little bit. Yeah. But as the instrumentals start to kind of pick up, like, like there's more to it sonically. There's more just being added all, all together. It's getting a little more intense. His voice picks up. It becomes a little more clear. He articulates a lot more and to the point where he's kind of yelling. And, yeah. But, like, that's over the course of, like, a minute to a minute and a half. So, like... It's a slow build, but it's really rewarding when it gets there. 
It adds a really cool presentation to the track. And I was having a lot of fun with the verse too, just because of that build. I thought it was great. I legitimately started clapping on the clapping portion. It's like <laughs> calling haves and have nots. Calling yeah. ha- like I was just sitting there like like a little stupid kid clapping my hands, clapping, spitting, laughing, jumping. Oh my god. <laughs> the visuals that come with that. No, I I was having fun with it though. It sounds great. Uh this one of my favorite parts of the track is literally something that happens quietly in the background. It might be part of those vocal embellishments you're talking about. Mm-hmm. It's hard to explain. It pops up periodically, especially towards the end. It's like the, these kind of like reverbed vocal singing one note, but it's like really shaky and wobbly. And it kind of adds like this really super unsettling feeling as if it's like possessed. Yeah. I guess it matches the tone of the ritual because it sounds like almost ritualistic, like humming or singing. Oh, okay. I thought it was really a cool addition, though. Like, I, I kept going back to the track and listening to it. Like, And I know that I've heard that before because, again, I've been listening to this album for 15 years. It's just it's so uh, so unsettling every time I hear it, but I really, really enjoy stuff like that. And, like, even without percussion, though, like, the amount of layering that goes into the end of the song is intense. There's a lot going on. Like, you have these synth, these noises, these samples, vocals are just kind of still going this whole thing kind of like leaves you feeling frightened and alone at the end of the track. Like there is no one to hold your hand at this point. Yeah. Like these droning samples that just kind of like send chills down my spine. So more please. Yeah. I, (sighs) I am very pleased that the music ended halfway through the last vocal line. So the song could end solely on the vocals. It didn't fade out. It didn't hard stop. It was just music ended. Then just like, two bars of vocals and then the song was over. And that's what I listening to like when you're listening to a song, you can kind of feel when it's going to sort of wind down, kind of sort of end. And I'm anticipating that happening. And then when it does happen, I'm like, Oh, thank God. (laughs) This is great. So I I really liked how the song ended on, on that note. Yeah. And it's, it's kind of interesting that the drums kind of cut off like, the last sort of the track, and then it's just like, again, like all these weird samples in there. Then the vocals are in there. But then, yeah, it eventually just goes down to vocals, which is just super yeah. chilling. But uh, again, very much appreciated. Like it. I like it a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was in I dig. I dug it. Yeah. Digged it. I, th- th- another track where you could just really hear Trent Reznor coming out. Like, it's, it's a very <laughs> dark track. This is a very dark song. Yeah. Lyrically and instrumentally, just like everything is... Super jet black. <laughs> yep. Yeah, got grubby hands on everything. But you know what? If if it didn't sound good, then we wouldn't be talking about it, right? So. Oh, hell no. I mean, we we might, but <laughs> yeah, we're here not, anyways. Not in was, this way. So. Yeah, it was definitely better than that. Yep. But as black as when your eyes are closed, that means it's the end of the album. It's all over now. Mm-hmm. Kind of unfortunately, because again, I was having a lot of fun with that last track. It, it, it didn't really feel like an ender, but I mean, at the same time, I guess, like, I don't know what else I'd put there, like, as compared to every track on the album. So I, I'm fine with it, I guess. For me, it kind of felt like an end track because of how much was going on. It was kind of like, okay, we, we know, like, I never really know if artists know what the order of tracks are going to be sort of, you know, from the demo or from sort of half recording them. But this one kind of felt like they were aware it was going to be the end and they just threw everything at it. They were like, you know what, this is our big bang to just end it all. Like just throw in the claps, throw in this, throw in that, do it. And I, I definitely felt that it was sort of the, you know, everyone coming out on stage after the play, bowing down and, you know. But then everyone yeah. in the audience, like, wide-eyed, jaw drop, like... Yeah, yeah, <laughs> slow Just ball terrified, ball. like, what did we just yeah. watch? Yep, yeah. yeah, that is that is how I felt with that song. At least yeah. as me as a musician, like, I, I... Even if, like, I don't know how many songs I'm going to write for, like, an EP or whatever, I yeah. always, like, I plan for, the, like, what the last track will be. It's like, if I even have one riff really early on, I'm like... That's going to work as the last song, yeah. so I'm keeping that one for later. Because oh, yeah. it's just audio storytelling, right? So you know yeah. where you want that story to end or what note that you want it to end on. Exactly. Yeah. But yes, we are on that end note now. The album is over. 
pretty good album if you ask me, but we will get to more details about how good it really is coming up in just a few minutes. But first, you made it this far through the review. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I'm pretty sure you have your own opinions about it. We would love to hear it, so make sure you let us know. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, follow, rate, be part of the musical community. And this is the perfect opportunity to do it because we just got through the album. But if you want even more opportunity, now's the time because we are doing our song rankings. Woo! This one I'm kind of excited I, for. I'm, I'm, uh, I've been periodically crossing off songs that I know we're likely not going to match on. Yeah. But there's still a handful of them open up to like a uh, possibility. So we will see. I don't know if I'm as optimistic as I was uh, when we made the prediction at the beginning. Um, but uh, you know what? Out of 15 tracks, we're bound to have a couple, even off chance. So imagine we had nothing hope. for a 15 song album. That would oh god, what are the odds? I still, I still think it would be very funny yet uncomfortable to just have completely inverse lists. I do, and this is also one of those lists where we're not gonna have a first or last. I can tell you that right now. Yeah, probably not. Uh, yeah, okay, almost guaranteed. Well, now, now's the time to prove each other right and or wrong. So above our heads, boom, graphics have changed. Uh, names and numbers that need song titles. And we are going to do that right now. So getting this list started, number 15 for me, DNA. No one ever does. No one ever does. That's unfortunate. I like that one. Yeah, I. it did not hit me as hard as it hit you. That's all good. Number 14, Tardust. WTF. Really, though? Oh, that one was really yeah. good. Yeah, I my optimism is crushed, and we've already done two. Woo! All right, number 13, Convict Colony. We are so fucked. <laughs> Banged and blown through. No shit, eh? Yeah. So fucked. I'm, I'm still crossing things off as I go, too, because you never know. Number 12, Raw. Yeah, okay, Raw. Okay, Raw. Right. <laughs> See, there I thought you had to get at least one. At <laughs> and least. it's always after one of us loses hope. It's always oh, yeah, the it's, one it's right like, after. oh yeah, we're not matching anything now. Next one. Oh. Okay, so good. Yeah. We got we got we got the one at least. Uh this uh this one can't match though. Number number eleven, no one ever does. Skin of a drum. Skin of a drum. Another really cool one. You're, you're losing my, my respect here. Number <laughs> ten, scared money. Raised to be lowered. Raised to be lowered. Number nine, Black History Month. DNA. Number eight, break. Uh, number eight, break. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah. Wow, I actually had that one cross off as no, we're not gonna match. Oh really? Yeah, that's that's uh, very interesting. Mm-hmm. I'm just kind of going through the list. Okay, there's still a couple. There's the, we can mm. still do, we can still do this, and we're running out of numbers here, so. Yes. Let's see what we can do. Uh, it won't be this one, though. Number seven, raised to be lowered. Scared money. Okay, that's that's still hopeful. Uh, not this one, though. Number six, WTF. What the fuck? The, ri- the ritual. Ritual. Number five, trigger. Sunday, bloody Sunday. I thought you were going to rate that one a little higher, to be honest. Mm. Yeah, we're that's it. We're done. Number four, skin of a drum. Convict colony. Hmm. I didn't think you would rate that one that high. You know how unsettling listening to you go, hmm, is. Like, this just speaks, that speaks so many words. You're just writing notes down about me as a person. Remember how I said the psychology episode's going to happen? <laughs> That's terrifying. Because you're you're kind of, like, changing up all my expectations here. It's like, oh, she's probably going to have this song closer to this area. It's, like, complete, like, pull off the list. <laughs> all right, number three for me, Sunday Bloody Sunday. Black History Month. Black History. I thought that would be your number one. Oh yeah. Because of the way you were talking about, it, like I, originally, yeah. I didn't think, but after you talked about it, I was like, she found it really catchy. She yeah. thought it was fun. Probably number one, but obviously it wasn't. Number two, the ritual. Tardust. Tardust. But I mean, like, I would say the top five are ones that I'm gonna go back to and purposely listen to, like seek them out. Heard us, but people call him Curtis. Uh, white <laughs> people call him Curtis. That's the lyrics. Number one for me, banged and blown through. Trigger. Pull the trigger. Come on down. 
Well then, here we go. Well, I'm glad you liked uh, the public enemy sample so much that you I put was, it at number one. Yeah, yeah. I I know that this has happened before. Uh, we talked about public enemy, and then I thought, yeah, yeah, whatever. This being the second time, I'm going to have to listen to them. Now. My violent heart, as I said, was a very uh, by Nine Inch Nails off of Year Zero. Uh, that song has a huge influence from the Bomb Squad, which is Public Enemy's uh, production team. That's what it was. And yep. that was like, what, number one or two on your list? I think so. I don't know. I'd have to it was pretty damn away. high. I know that much. Yeah. Damn, well, I, I like that. Oh, <laughs> uh, you know what? I shouldn't have changed my answer because I originally said two and then I went with three. <laughs> I'm a That's sheep. Okay. I followed you into that one. Hey, you know what? <laughs> it is on record. So you were still correct. It's on rate the record, if anything. <laughs> Whatever. But don't even listen to me anymore. Uh, you don't, you, you, but you'll still have to, I guess, because we still have to rate the record. Speaking Woo! of which, so why don't we go ahead, transition screen, to just do that now? Ta-da! Here it is. After all of those episodes down below, we now have a new one to add to the list. And as you can see, last week's episode, I mean, if you can spot the uh, Where's Waldo in the crowd here, <laughs> Living Colors Vivid, the one we did last week, is down in the C tier between Rush and Malibu Ken. Unfortunate, but I mean, good tracks on it, but just not good enough. Yeah. But that's okay. That was last week. This is this week. Sal Williams' Tardust album. <laughs> I have to, yep. like, emphasize it slowly. It's like, it's got a different name. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you don't know what we're talking about, just Google it. That's Google is your friend. That, or it's literally in the title of this podcast. Like, I'll, I'm going to put the title in the, the podcast. I'm going to put the actual name in it, but I'm just yeah. not going to say it. All right. Fair. Anyways, yes, yeah, Sal Williams is here waiting for a spot on our list. And to rate the record this week to start... It's going to be Savannah telling me her score. 71. 71 even? 71 dead on. Not bad. Not bad. I must I, uh, I didn't A it, but I also didn't see it. So. No see you later this time around. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're going to stack the B tier this time. Give C yeah. a run for its money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, apparently so, but uh, hey, B's more positive than C, so I, I can definitely uh, get behind that. Hell yeah. My score, on the other hand, uh, this is going to be one of those ones where it's going to be like, where does this fall in the B tier? Because it's one of those like scores that kind of match the others. Mm -hmm. My personal score, I, I was much more uh, appreciative of this album than you were. 78.33%. Nice. <laughs> I, I got that one high, high, high into the B tier. So that means that falls at an average of 74.66%. 74. That is okay. dead middle of the B tier. Let me do some math. So Pearl Jam's 10 was 74.1. Oh, so then it goes just above Pearl Jam, huh? Mm hmm. So Animals is Leaders, that is the next one. And that was at 76.12. 76.12 makes sense uh where okay there it is i'm doing this all in real time right here on camera boom there he is slid right between there hey guys how's it going <laughs> that i would say is pretty good it's it's in the top five so far we've almost completely maxed out a tier i have a plan don't like i have a plan for when we max out a tier don't worry about yeah. it it's gonna be fine just the image gets smaller and smaller and smaller but yet another album that yeah uh, you didn't a tier <laughs> personally on your personal tier list like s and a i still have the spider webs up there and i'm just gonna let them grow and grow and grow <laughs> as it goes that's fine i just would like to say that i am a distinguished woman of taste and when something is worthy of s and a tier i shall judge and rate it as such we'll see about that <laughs> Well, there you have it then. We have ourselves a B tier, middle of the road B tier album. But you know what? I'm okay with that. I mean, it, it's it's obviously not the best album. It's not the most perfect album. But I mean, yeah. it's goddamn good enough. Yep. I realize I like Public Enemy completely off topic. Um, and there were a lot of songs on here that like, I know I use this phrase a lot when I'm doing the singles review, but this shit's going on my playlist, like 100% already there. So I you know, one day, doing this. One day you're going to have to like actually publish this playlist and let people actually see it. Oh my God. There's so many other, there's like Miley Cyrus on that too. So I don't know. Well, you, I think you'll need a playlist specifically for like the singles reviews just so, cause you keep saying that's going on the playlist. That one's not going on the playlist. So yeah. you, that way you have like a comprehensive, comprehensive history of everything that you said you're going to put on the playlist. Not okay. just our picks of the week from Wednesday. That's a whole different thing. 
Okay, cool. And then I'll uh, I'll link it so then people can uh, can listen to it with me. Excellent. But we digress talking about our playlists and our production plans. <laughs> it's all good, though. It's not exactly a secret. But thank you very much for making it all the way to the end of the mm-hmm. episode. I uh, hope this one was a wild ride for you. hope you enjoyed the album. Uh, make sure you let us know what you thought about the album as well down in the comments below or like wherever you might be listening to this. But you don't just have to do it there either. You can let us know your your album rating and your song rankings and just your overall opinions over on the social media as well because we are on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at Rate the Record Podcast, Twitter at Rate the Record, and of course Gmail if you just want to do it the old fashioned way. Rate the Record at gmail.com. Also, don't forget that we do have a request form down in the description as well. Uh, so that way, if you want to hear a particular album, if we can actually get to it, then by all means we will. Oh, yeah. But it's just a Google Doc, fill out some uh, basic information, just like a few questions about the album that you want to request and everything like that, and uh, we'll see if we can get to it. Because, I mean, again, we have two coming up now, and both of those requests used, uh, they used the Google Doc. Yeah. I like new music. Feed it to me. Exactly. So, yeah, and like we'll try to get it on as quickly as we can. We don't want to do back-to-back episodes like that, but at the same time, we'll still fit it in as soon as we can. Hell Yes. No more of this uh, 10 episodes waiting stuff like we had to do for Brooks and Dunn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little, little sooner. We'll finagle some things. But yes, once again, thank you very much for watching this episode. Hope you had a great time because we did too. And of course, we're going to be back next week. But speaking of being back next week, <laughs> before we let you go, we usually like to give a little, like, a little hint teaser of what to expect next week. And yes, it's another episode where it's going to be Savannah's Choice. <laughs> So who better to tell us a little bit about next week's episode than Savannah herself? All right. So (laughs) next week's band has been around since 1979 Mm -hmm. and has performed on Saturday Night Live and sang at WrestleMania. No, you are not getting rid of the wrestling references. Wait a minute. We already did Living Color last week. They sang at WrestleMania. That's weird anyway. (laughs) Oh, my God. One. So one member of this band left. And another member tracked them down, believing that they needed rescuing from a religious cult. The latter was charged and then later acquitted of attempted kidnapping. And he was a part of the Heaven's Gate cult. (laughs) I, I have no idea, but as soon as I found that out, I was like, that is the clue. And if anybody gets it... Let us know. I I would like to know if you know this one. Uh, I hope whoever it is is in a better state and mental state now than they were because yeah. you're not in a good mental state if you join a cult. Yeah, not <laughs> Let's just at say that all. much. Vulnerable as hell. But we're not going to get into discussing cults. It gets really controversial at that point because good news, it's the end of the episode. So this is where we cut off. So once again, thank you very much for li- oh, listening to this episode, watching the episode, whatever you did. Thank you for being here. Uh, we'll see you again next week. Until then, listen to some awesome music like today's Saul Williams' Tardust album. Woo! And we'll see you next week. So take care, friends. <laughs> Bye-bye.